a lot of aspects to a test management solution. Lots of knobs, levers and switches to push and pull. Our side-by-side -side feature comparison identified just over 100 of them. Obviously, not all are important, but some will be more important to certain teams than others. However, there are seven features, complex features, that every test management solution has to address in some way. And they are assignment, version control, parameterization, libraries, result aggregation, retesting, configurations and releases. And in this mini webinar, I'm going to walk you through how QMetry stands up to each of these seven criteria. First then, assignment. Now there's usually two aspects to this. When you view the test case, you will see two values. You'll see the assignee and you'll see the reporter. So the reporter is the person that created the test case and the assignee you can think of as the person who's responsible for maintaining. And that same reporter and assignee approach is used at the test cycle level. So if we drill into a test cycle and we're looking at test cycle or test run three here, you'll see under the details for the test cycle that you've got the reporter and the assignee value. Now the test cases that are included in this test cycle have both an assignee, that's the default assignee from the test case, and an execution assignee. And that execution assignee is only created when you add the test case to the cycle, except when you link test cases to the cycle, you don't get the ability or opportunity to set that value, even if you add the field from within here. So you link it, close it, and it's still left with a null or a blank execution assignee value. You only get to set that value once you've started executing the test cycle. And during the execution, then you can start defining the person who is executing the test case within the cycle. Now I'm not sure if I'm missing something here, but I could find no way to either bulk update or set the execution assignee outside of the actual execution or test run. Even when you view the test cycle itself and you see the execution assignee for the test cases within the test cycle, there seems to be no capability to set that value within QMetry, either individually or by bulk updating. So in short, at the moment, I think it's more that QMetry assumes you want to track assignment at the cycle level and set at the test case during the execution. Version control. In QMetry, version control is well supported. When you view the test cases, and you drill into the test cases, you'll find the feature to create a new version or swap between existing versions that you've created. When you create a new version, QMetry will copy all of the metadata and the test steps to create the next version of the test case. And then when you view the test cycles, you have the ability to include the selected version of the test case that you need in that cycle. So if I add and link additional test cases, you can see in here that I can include and add version four of this test case, or I can modify to add an older version of the test case. In fact, QMetry will let you add all different versions of the same test case in the same test cycle. If you go back and you update the test case, perhaps we add another step in the test case. This is test case 17, and I add another step. Add more test data and expected results. And then save this test case. Even though I didn't 
roll the version identifier of the test case there. When I come to the test cycle and execute the test cycle, and we select the test case that has been updated, you will see that you get a warning. So you can either stick with the old version or the old state of the test case before you updated it, or during the execution, you can update and sync to the latest version of that test case. Parameterization. So Qmetry does support parameterization of the test cases and test steps. So when you view a test case, you'll see that under the steps tab, that there is a parameters drop down. The only slight issue here is that the place to enter the parameter details is only in the configuration area of Qmetry. So you enter parameters for all of your test cases in this one central configuration location within Qmetry. And these parameters and the values for them that you set as well are then made available to all of the test cases. But you cannot define parameters in the test cases themselves. So from here, I can add the parameters that I've already pre-created in the configuration area, and I can select the values as well that I defined in the configuration area prior to editing the test case. The problem I see with this is if you have a big test project with lots of testers, everybody's going to be in the configuration area, adding and modifying parameters, and you may find that everybody's stepping on each other's toes. But equally, for other projects, you may find that a central location where you can control and monitor what's going on could be useful too. Libraries. So we have the ability to build out the repository of test cases by folders, by labels, by components, and other metadata within Qmetry. If we view a test case, we can see that test case is allocated to a folder. And we can also group or organize our test cases by labels, which you define in the test cases, or components, which are set from within the configuration area of Qmetry. When we select the component area, you'll see here in config under configuration that we've defined components A, B, and C. Now, this is slightly strange in Qmetry because these components are defined independently of the core components you define within the project within JIRA. So if I come to my JIRA configuration for the project itself and I select components, you'll see I can create components here which are used by my core issues in JIRA and that is separate from the components in Qmetry. Having said that, we can use components to organize our test cases and some nice features in the library area of Qmetry are that you can right click on here, link everything in a folder to a test cycle straight away and even other little touches like link this folder with a story or copy the folder path for all of those test cases. There's also a bulk update capability if you select multiple test cases, you can select update and you get the capability to bulk update multiple test cases in one go, a feature not found in some other JIRA test management tools. And there's the standard capability to do things like show hide columns and add filters. Again, one strange thing on the filter side of things is that you can define your filters by all of the different field types, but you can't select based on a value or field not being set. But pretty much everything's here that you'll need and it's nicely organized and it's simple to get to grips with and use. Result aggregation. Now this is a challenging one and a complex one for most tools to implement. 
But how do you pull together test results to give a unified view of the latest set of results across multiple builds or even versions? So within QMetry, if we drill into a test case, in the first instance, you can view all of the executions for a particular test case. So in this instance, there's only been one execution of the test case in one test run. Now that's useful, but we need more than that. If we go back to the test case view, we could search for a set of test cases based on either the fixed version or the execution result, but that will always give you the last execution result regardless of the version that you're looking for to report against. So if I'd run or a set of tests against version four and I searched for all my test cases, this could quite possibly be the test result for version two or version one even of the product under test. So another option we have within QMetry is that if under the configuration we define some values for the builds that we're going to be testing against and then in the test runs or test cycles when you're executing the tests in that cycle you will find the option to specify the build that that particular test was run against. The only unfortunate thing is there doesn't seem to be a way to filter for all test results based on that particular build value that you've set. So probably the best way to approach this from the QMetry point of view is actually under the metadata for the cycle itself is to define from the fixed version drop down and that's a value that's defined in your JIRA configuration. Or you could base it on the sprint which again is a value that's defined within your JIRA project. And then when you're searching and reporting you search and filter based on either the fixed version or the sprint version to get your result reports in this view. The only downside to this is that you could have run individual test cases against different versions or builds during the execution and that may throw off the results that you're displaying here slightly. But if you're careful about how and what those individual tests are run against and define it at the test cycle level, you could even go as far as reporting or filtering based on the sprint or the build or the version from within the test plans if, if you need to. Retesting. So next we need to identify all of the failed test cases and possibly group them into a dedicated cycle or retest that we want to carry out. So in QMetry we can see the failed test cases in a run and one clever feature within QMetry is that when we're executing that test run we can come back in at a later date and we may have three test cases in here but we can rerun a particular test case. So these have failed and I can click on start a new test execution and it will create another result for this test case within the run. So I now have two executions for the same test case in a run and the test case may have failed the first time round and then second time we run it against a different build perhaps, build two, we could then mark this as a past test case. But this does mean that you will have to go through each test cycle and identify each test case on a one-to-one -one basis and update those results and rerun the test cases. A more usual approach might be to look for all of the failed test cases and group them into their own dedicated test cycle. And we can do that from within the test case library. In here we could search based on execution result being failed.
and then we may multi-select all the failed test cases and you can link those to an existing test cycle to rerun them. If I'm being slightly pedantic, it would be nice to be able to look at the test plan, find all of the failed test cases within a test plan, and then maybe pull all of those failed test cases into their own dedicated test cycle for execution. But overall, there's enough here to meet most needs for retesting. You can rerun within the test cycle, or you can pick out based on the last execution result. Configurations and releases. So in Qmetry, how do we track our execution results against the config environments that we run in? And how do we track against the releases or the versions and builds? So in the configuration area of Qmetry, you can define the environments that you're planning to run against, and you can define the builds that you're going to run your tests against. And then of course, Within the core JIRA application, when you come to your releases, you can define the versions of the application and test cases and test cycles in Qmetry can be logged with the fixed version or test version against these versions as well. So when we come to execute a test cycle, you can link that test cycle with the main metadata and details to a fixed version, which is the JIRA value. You can link it also to a sprint if you want to. But when you actually execute that cycle, for each test case, you can then set the build and the environment variables that you ran them against. So I can set the environment here and I can set the build value for that particular test case within that particular test cycle. The only frustrating thing is that there doesn't seem to be the capability to bulk update these values. You have to set them at each test case when you execute it. And now that could be quite frustrating as you go through hundreds of test cases and update both of these fields each time to say which environment or build you ran against. And then when you come to the reporting side of things in Qmetry, everything you need is in here. So when we come to look at test execution reports, for example, we can look at the execution summary and I can say, create me a report for test case execution based on the environments that we've run against. So I'm reporting on test cycles. I've selected environment over here and if I generate that report, it will be broken down by environment. Or that could be build, or it could be something else like components or test case type. So it's a really simple approach on the reporting side of things that's very easy to use and, and implement. In conclusion then, the standout aspect with Qmetry is ease of use. A couple of small shortcomings in that you can't search and filter based on fields that have no value set. The components seem to be duplicating what's already implemented in the core JIRA capability. Now, that could be a good thing for some teams though. And there's no ability to bulk update values fields during the test execution. But these are minor points and against these seven complexities, Qmetry performs well.